Okay. All right. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. I can see it. Should um, Seth have a last name on the uh, trails committee? Seth Johnson. Okay. Got, guys, one quick thing. We're going to change the, the Luke Barnaby is going to do it. His schedule wound up working more. Instead of so Seth? Right. Instead of Seth, yeah. Okay. Okay, Just that just changed just recently, so. Should I keep it in these notes because they were the minutes from yeah. last meeting? Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. And then I can update it when I do my spiel. Okay. So Lenahan is L I N E. And Ellen, Ellen's wrong too. I think it's, is that O Hosper? I think so, yeah. OS? <clears throat> yeah, I think that's right. Not sure how Jonathan spells Jonathan, but. Mariah, did you see Rudy's chat? I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that? What's that mean? Looking to have hold meeting in late August, September under town plan. What's a hold meeting? 
I think she just meant to hold a meeting or to have a meeting. I think it just got switched like to. Okay, you got so it. Yeah. To you're hold right. a meeting. Yep, I think you're right. I like it that Brenda Field, uh, town COVID czar, is holding the town meeting on May 22nd <laughs> on the fairgrounds. Guess we don't have to show might, up. Huh? You might need some commas there. I guess the town will be holding that. I mean, Brenda's welcome to come, but. Uh, <laughs> Or we're just being guided by, anyways. Yes. Yeah. I like that Eliza Minucci is a green up queen, not a green up czar. <laughs> there is a difference. There sure is. All right, looks good to me. Yeah, looks good. I, I make a motion we accept the, what's the date? Minutes. It was the 27th. The April 27th, 2021 minutes. I second that. All right, everybody in, in favor, say aye. 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 So moved. Okay. <laughs> that an I? Um, I got road stuff. Tell us your road stuff. Um, uh, they fixed a culvert on Spring Road, the village side of Rick Barnaby's. It started washing out the end of it. Yep. They fixed that and they fixed the culvert by Larry's house. Um, same thing. <coughs> or they're going to fix it. Yeah, that's been an issue in the past. So probably they're going to fix it. And he wanted um, Matt Loftus to bring his excavator because they had to have something a little more reach. Yep. Um, project on Dickerman Hill has been started and um, they've brought are going to be bringing a bunch of topsoil or getting rid of a bunch of topsoil so Rodney's going to dump it on them rocks that Pat Ross was upset about and Where, where's that I forgot Pat was upset oh was oh. it down by the rec field? Maybe, yeah, maybe. I don't 
sounds vaguely familiar, but I guess we can it was something that Pat Ross told him he didn't have to cover, and then this year he said he did have to cover. Oh, so. okay. Well, as long as he knows what to do. Um, they ran the grader last Thursday and Friday because um, they figured it was dried up enough, you know, for a good grading. Um, and they took down the weight limit signs. And Larry's truck's got to go to McLeod's to, they got to put new bushings in the walking beams. Um, and then uh, 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 Rodney talked to um, Mike Barnaby about um, leaves at the transfer station. So he's going to get some of those concrete blocks and make a make a little bunker yep. to stick the leaves in. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, and Brenda called Rodney about wanting to get his take on the uh, legal trail stuff, but as he said, he doesn't really have any authority over the legal trails. He just goes down to class four, and then that's kind of the end of it. Um, they were looking at a, a dump truck body safety stand thing on the state auction website. And Thomas was keeping an eye on it and they were going to bid on that. Um, if, if they can get it at a reasonable price, they're going to have it at the town garage for insurance purposes. Um, Rodney has changed his mind on the sand business and he wants to get it from pickets now. Um, I guess he talked to little Larry again or something and and he's supposed to dig into the pile more or do something and he said he thinks he's going to end up with better sand. Okay. So, Review the prices again between uh, the two. Smith, Smith was fourteen bucks. Um, little Larry is fourteen seventy five for yes. five thousand five thousand uh, yards. And that's a delivered price to town yes. garage. Yes. Yeah. Um, Rodney feels that the quality is going to be better or something. He, he thinks it is. Yeah. Um, that's his feeling. Um, and I asked him how Pickett was going to deliver, and he said Pickett was going to put up the pile, and then he was going to hire someone and to truck it. So they'd be trucking, you know, they'd truck it immediately or whatever. Yeah. So there goes your... Where, where was dollars. Smith getting his sand from, Mike? Excuse me? Where was Smith getting his sand from? From I think it was down in Kenny Blazel's pit. Yeah, that's down East Randolph. Yeah. And and Rodney said the sand was good, but um, he thinks Pickett's is better if if he does what he says he's going to do, which I don't know what that means. Um, and. Uh, they fixed up the class four road up by um, Nancy House um, because Ed's going to be buried in that cemetery. And so they fixed it. They, one of the culverts had failed. So he got an old culvert that he had at the town garage and put in there and, and spruced it up enough so they can get up in there. All right. And that's it. All right. Somebody want to make a motion about the gravel? Uh, sand, I mean, sands. I'm sorry. Um, I make a motion that we get the sand from um, Pickett's 
uh, 5,000 yards for a price of $14.75 a yard. And how much are we getting? 5,000 yards. That's $73,750. Right. Oh, you second it, John? I second that motion. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, how, much, how much money we got in our sand? I, I don't Gallon. know. Um, haven't seen that lately. I don't remember. Seemed like it was a total of 75 that we budgeted, but that but we shouldn't have that much left over because we usually pay half up front and half after the fact, which would be in the next fiscal year. So we should have approximately half of that left. Do we pay any in this fiscal year for that, Gary? Yeah, usually we pay approximately half in one fiscal year. Yeah, we year. pay half. Before the end of this fiscal year? Yes. We pay half before July and yeah. half after. And little Larry's okay with that? He probably and Sand, we got we got like 33,000 left. Yeah. So I don't know, I guess I didn't, I didn't ask Rodney if old Larry would be happy with that or not, but um, that's the way we used to do it with them, right? Yep. Yeah, we've done it that way quite a few years. Yeah. And, but, but I'll, I'll ask Rodney about that. Well, and if they if they want to wait until the the end when the sand is delivered, we can just pay the total amount then. Right. But it just will come out of one fiscal year versus two fiscal years. It'll make it'll make us basically make us have a carryover from one fiscal year. But, right. but it, I think it'd he, be better better for our accounting if we dump the yeah. thirty thousand now. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm sure he'll take it if we twist his arm. Really? Mrs. Pickett <laughs> might, might take it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, a motion has been made and seconded to um, uh, buy sand from Pickett's Incorporated for $14.75 a yard times 5,000 yards. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Is somebody going to get well, hold right. of Right, we could even if it even if it's not half, we could pay him just what what's left in the sand budget for this fiscal right. year. Right, right, right. Because we got approximately thirty thousand left, and so right. we can just give that to him. And right, I, I don't think we ever paid him exactly half. We just paid him right. about half. So right. Okay. Well, I I can. Do you want to call Rodney Mike or? Yes, I will. Okay, so he'll he'll know tomorrow morning to call Pickett. So. Yep. All right. Yeah, because so he wanted to jump right on it. Yeah. Well, that's good. Rolling. That's good. Anything else for the the highway report? No. Um, I think that was it. <laughs> Sounds good to me. What's next, Miss AA? Uh, the next thing is I need you guys to approve um, a outside consumption permit. So I can either share my screen again and you can read it or I can just describe it to you. I always consume inside. <laughs> Here, I'll just share my screen and you can see it again. Um, it's not that, it's this. So are they going to have free beer for select board members? That, yeah, that's part of it. That's okay. what the application's for. Excellent. Excellent. What well, is a three ounce pour wouldn't really be worth it, would it? Well, you have to have quite a few of them. Looks good to me. All right. Looks good to me. Perfect. Send her off. Thank you.
All right, so the next thing is the Memorial Day slash the town meeting discussion. Um, I think we were just hoping to nail down a little bit more exactly what we're gonna do for town meeting since it's like very soon. <laughs> Well, how about we just uh, firstly just say we're going to have we'd like to have pre-town meeting next week, next Tuesday night, because by then hopefully everyone has their uh, town reports and they'll be able to peruse them <clears throat> and ask some good thoughtful questions of the select board. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hopefully going to do that next Tuesday night. We ought to decide on a time. I'd like seven o'clock. Just gonna, I can get chores done then. All right, with me. And it shouldn't last. I mean, I don't know, half an hour or something, or maybe an hour. Anyway, so it's not like we'll be up till midnight. Sounds good to me. Okay. So let's have it, Mariah. That we're gonna have pre-town meeting next week, Tuesday night, whatever the date is. <clears throat> seven o'clock. <laughs> And can you get that properly, Mariah? Yeah, I definitely can do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, for the baby, Gary, we're not we're not running afoul of any state statutes, are we? For for timing. Well, we usually have pre-town meeting the, the a week, week before. So I think if we're two weeks out, but no, we won't be. It'll be a week before. <clears throat> right. Well, That's not quite a week because it's no, a Saturday. It'll be about right? four days before. Right. Right. That's what I, I was wondering about. Right. I don't know. I <clears throat> some towns don't even have pre-town meetings, so it seems to me it might be just optional to have a pre-town meeting. Right. Well, let's do it. And <clears throat> let's try to get in trouble. Kathy wants to know how we'll get word out about it. We're giving word right now. It'll spread like wildfire. <clears throat> put it. Yeah. I, put it I can post a couple of warnings about it. I'll put it on the on Facebook. I'll put it on, it's already actually on the town calendar on our website. And then um, I'll put it on the listserv and things like that. Okay, that should work. Where it'll get around. <clears throat> but it was, what well, it's printed in the town report for when? Tonight. Is right now tonight. is it listed in the town reports that people are getting this week that it was tonight so if people see that they, they think they'll they missed it i think so. and so i'm just wondering i know you have the light up thing and you have sandwich boards not everybody's on facebook so and not everyone right now is going into the town offices i just i don't know it just seems like a good idea to get the word out i guess well, we'll do, do the best we can. Yeah, uh, Brenda <clears throat> put her sign out front. Put it on the sign. Yeah. You could put pre-town meeting in the date and then town meeting in the date just to remind people. Right. Is Brenda on our, on our Zoom meeting tonight? Well, she's not. Zara is elsewhere. I guess so. Um, if, I can have, Rudy knows how to do the um, electronic sign if that's what you're thinking about and he can update that for us. He's giving us a thumbs up. <laughs> hey, Todd here. Quick question. Is the uh, town meeting going to be on? Uh, You're breaking up, Todd. Can't hear you at all now, Todd. Yeah, hang on. I was just wondering whether the town meeting, not pre-town meeting, is warned in this coming Thursday's Herald. I don't I know believe, that. I believe it is. I'm, I believe that um, Wendy had posted it in there because she had posted the, the full warning. Um, but I can double check and see if it's being run this week as well. I know it has been run in previous. Um, oh, OK. As long as it was run previously, that's good. Thank you, Mariah. Okay, well now, uh, seems like we've got that covered. What about Memorial Day? Um, any, 
anybody talk to anybody that is in charge of anything? I've, I've talked to Alan and he said he was going to bring it up to the, the directors last week at the director's meeting at the fair. And, um, but he didn't see any problem with the 5th of July. Um, talked to Tracy Amel about the parade and she was very excited about having it on the 5th of July. John, have you talked to the fire department about their chickens? Yeah, they, they seem to minimal to moving it to when people will be here. So they're having an annual meeting Thursday. So I'll confirm it with them then. Okay. Um, and Kathy Galuzzo is here. Uh, I think she wanted to have the, the cow flop bingo and, and some maybe giveaway ice cream or something like that. The last I knew, if she's still here, she can speak up. My battery is running low. I'm going to try to plug it in without disconnecting. <clears throat> Here goes. Get ready for me to leave. Hey, I made it successfully done. Look at that. All right, any more discussion on Memorial Day or any questions or anything? We should probably post, put something on the right front and center on the website for that too, that our traditional Memorial Day parade is being moved to a red, white, and blue July 4th. Yeah. July, July 5th. Yeah, I, I can do that. We, I don't know. We're pretty much the same. I mean, I guess we won't do the same sort of memorial, but we could figure out something else maybe at the end of the parade. Right. I don't know if, if like the library wants to do something like a plant sale, well, not a plant sale, that wouldn't be the right time of year, but book sale or something. There, there's probably other people that want to do things. Um, Mariah's on here, so she could speak to that. There she is. Oh. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yeah, the friends of the library will really love that information. We weren't sure the last time um, that we had a meeting, like it was sort of up in the air, but definitely book sale will be happening. So that's great. All right. But anyway, we can kind of make it up as we go anyway, because it's. Yeah. Yes. All right. Any more discussion on the 5th of July? I guess. Right, once we confirm things like parade, definitely, chicken barbecue, definitely, and yeah. I guess go from there. Those are probably the two big things, right? And library sale yeah. of some well, sort. Word will get around and, and we can firm it up a little bit more next meeting as far as that goes. Yeah. And at town meeting too. Oh, true, true. That's, that's good. All right, unless somebody else is mad, let's move on to the next thing. I, I'm just gonna insert one quick thing that the Tunbridge Church is just posted this week that they're planning to ring the church bell on Memorial Day weekend for every resident in Tunbridge who passed in the last year. So even though there's not the traditional Memorial Day festivities in town, that component is still going to happen on the Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, so people can watch for that and listen to that. I think they're gonna be reading the names from an outdoor service on the fairgrounds on Sunday morning. Good, that'd be nice. Kathy, what time do they ring the bells? The um, bell. I can, how about, well, oh wait, I, I guess if, the, if I'm on next for the agenda item, I can't do that, but I could copy the text that Kay Jorgensen shared. I, I don't know it offhand, but I bet it's going to be during their 10 o'clock service. I'd have to look it up. So I'll do that before the end of the meeting and paste it in the chat. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Well, it looks like Kathy's up next talking about transfer station stuff. Okay. So um, 
Mariah, is it possible for me to share my screen at all? I have a couple of things I just wanted to share with the select board and I have a few questions for you. Let me see if I can. Okay. And Stop. it doesn't need to be immediately. It could be in the next couple of minutes. Um, so I have so far focused my efforts on Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, figuring out kind of the puzzle of how it works for member towns. I have contact information for Casella, who is our hauler and hauls our um, trash and zero sort recycling. Um, but I haven't reached out and had that conversation yet. So I did find out, and you may have known this and I didn't, I did find out that the Tumbridge rep, they want one rep from every member town. And the Tumbridge rep is really a nonprofit board member. They manage the budget, they hire staff, they oversee staff. It's like a board member. Um, so they sent me the board orientation packet, which is chock full of information. And to me, it feels like a lot more than I kind of came to you interested in making sure people recycle right. So our recycling doesn't get dumped in the trash when it gets to the facility because we're not doing things right. That was kind of my mission. And that is definitely a part of being a town rep is helping communicate those things to your town. So it's a, it's a part of it. That part's not wrong. Um, but the board member role is pretty vast. Um, and it's not just, you know, recycling, right. It's, you know, complete management of solid waste and um, following state laws and things like that. So I am looking at it, but I had some questions for you. I was wondering, we haven't had a rep for about 10 years and like legally we're supposed to, we're supposed to have a rep. So I, I was curious if anyone knows historically what, like I remembered it being mentioned on town meeting day, but I haven't, I don't think in recent years and I didn't see it in like, I haven't seen the town report yet, but I didn't see it in the warning for the meeting because it's a select board appointed position. It's not like a town elected position, but I'm just curious in the last 10 years, if there's been any effort to get that rep, because maybe there are people in town who would be interested if they knew the select board needed that person. Any, cause I haven't been following it. So I don't know if you know, like, yes, we try and no one's interested or, you know, we haven't really said anything. Maybe if we do, we could drum up some interest. Any insight? Kathy, describe what you mean by a board member as in as in the Tumbridge rep would be part of the Central Vermont sort of decision making group. So so any in, as far as that, you know, it's a municipal district goes, you're you're part of a you're a voting member on on everything they do. So if they decide to put in, a, you know, a, a no sort or whatever it's called zero sort you know facility in montpelier you're, you're you're intimately involved in that absolutely so the board i read i'm i'm not going to show you the whole thing tonight but i highlighted a couple parts i thought the select board might want to know about the board rep role but in order to be a board rep i mean you, it's uh, um Nonprofits need to be governed by a board of directors and Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District is a nonprofit and they like so they have to hire the executive director and oversee the executive director they have to do the budget every year so one of the meetings is a budget meeting. Um, so I like came to you like make sure you put your foil in a ball like so i'm i'm excited about recycling and passing those tips on I don't know about that whole like fiscal oversight, employee oversight. So I don't, I just felt like now that I've learned this much about it, could we get the word out? I'm not saying no, because I feel like Tumbridge really needs this rep. Once you look at what's involved, I think Tumbridge is missing out by paying on being a member and not having a rep. But maybe there's someone who's just much more knowledgeable or or skilled in that area it, living in Tumbridge we don't know there could be someone who maybe like works in that field or has has an environmental degree or an environmental law degree you know those things that could be really skilled I'm just like passionate about recycling and it sounds like they would rather have that than nobody but I just don't know there could be someone better than me who could represent the town so 
I'm bringing that to you as my reaction the more I dig into this. Um, so I'm going to just share a couple of things that I learned, and this will help maybe give you an idea. Um, I just have to find it. Yes. And um, you should be able to share your screen if you want to now. Yeah. So I'm going to share this and just tell me if you see some orientation for Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District. Is that what you're seeing? Yep. Okay, good. And close your eyes if you get seasick. I'm going to scroll to the parts I highlighted. Um, so these are things I thought the select board would be interested in. So this is just real quick. The Vermont law says that municipalities are responsible for management and regulation of solid waste. Now there are ways you can do this. You can do it on your own. That would be really hard for a small town. You can establish an interlocal agreement with other municipalities. Like you could have four towns that got together and did that. Um, and, or you can join a solid waste management district, which is what Tumbridge has done. So Tumbridge has to do one of those three things. So if you discontinued your membership in central Vermont solid waste management district, you'd have to do one of the other two things, right? <laughs> so I don't know if you knew that, like this was new to me, like just learning how, how this works. So when people say, why are we paying them? Well, it's a dollar per resident to be a member plus um, like a fee on tonnage of waste, which that might be different if we're using a private hauler like Casella. So I don't know what Tumbridge pays. If it's $1,200 for a dollar per person, does that seem like a reasonable fee that you don't need to create your own solid waste management plan just for the town, which would probably cost a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so. Right. So Kathy, I think yep. like the, the Royalton Bethel transfer station is exactly that other, one of those other alternatives. Like an interlocal arrangement. Exactly, two exactly. yeah. And I don't think they're listed on Central Vermont's, oh, here are the towns right here. Because they're not part of it, right? They're not here, right. So, so anyway, just food for thought. That's why we pay. That's why we're a member because to comply with the law, you have to manage your waste. Um, in one of these ways. And what that includes is a required solid waste implementation plan, a SWIP. Um, so it's not as easy as just, oh, we'll hire a hauler and send it away. No, you need to have a plan. So Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District does that for Tombridge and all of its member towns. And they have a zero waste goal. So their goal is zero waste, which is you know kind of a trend in green initiatives, but it's a big, big goal. And what I'm learning as I'm learning about how like zero sort recycling, a lot of what we send to the facility off with Casella gets wasted. Um, not a majority of it, um, but I have learned about all the examples of things we put into our recycling bin that when they get there, they go to the landfill because they're not done right. So that's where, that's where Kathy comes in. Like I wanna help fix that and promote doing it right so that doesn't happen. And I'll just give you one quick example from the webinar I attended is they said waxy cardboard. If you have produce and um, you're a farm and you send produce to a grocery store, you put it in a waxy corrugated cardboard box. If that wax cardboard gets in the cardboard recycling accidentally and a, a person on the line misses it, and it gets put into the recycled cardboard, when they find it, when they're doing like quality checks, they have to throw away the entire roll of recycled cardboard. So it like, it, it ruins good recyclables when we recycle wrong. Um, and these facilities, they said, have employees who, you know, can you picture a blue plastic recycling bin that some like offices or homes might have? They said, 14 of those per minute go by the conveyor belt, by the zero sort employees. So they only have that quick to see, did you rinse your stuff? Did you? And so they throw away whatever looks like it could contaminate good recyclables. Like if someone puts all of their soda cans in a plastic bag and ties a knot in it, that goes in the trash. They do not have time to tear that open and recycle your cans. So this was said to us very clearly as a fact. If you put your recycling in a bag, it gets thrown away. We just don't, our facility people don't have time um, because of how much they have. So zero sort has pros and cons. Easier for the residents, but you know, maybe more waste. So 
those are the kinds of things that Central Vermont Solid Waste Management is trying to fix with education, webinars, information on their website. And that's where I think Tunbridge has some gaps. Um, and I'll point that out to you in a second when I go to our website. Um, so um, how does it operate? There's a board of supervisors and the board is comprised of one representative from each town. They have their meetings. They hire the general manager. Um, and then they talk about, I'm not gonna go through all this with you, but they talk about all their meetings and their budget planning and things like that. How is it paid for? A dollar per resident plus a surcharge of $30 per ton. I wasn't sure about that because we're using a private hauler. Um, so I don't know anyone familiar with the Tunbridge town budget. Do we just pay Central so Vermont Solid Waste Management District that $1 per person or are we paying them more? I don't, I don't see anywhere that we actually paid them anything. Uh, I know Wendy had said something to me that there's, when I asked her over email, she said there were line items for various recycling and well, so I don't all know. kinds of line items for recycling, but nothing um, specifically to Central Vermont Waste District. So there should be a per capita fee that we're paying. Yeah. Okay, so I, all right. So that's somewhere we definitely, we definitely okay. pay that. Okay. <clears throat> what well, Gary, did you want to say something? Well, you, there there is somewhere that number comes up somewhere in the in our budget. I don't remember where it is. Okay. All right. So yeah. we can find out more about that. Yeah. Uh, we must definitely be a per there's definitely a per capita, Kathy. The, okay. the thirty dollars per ton thing, I don't I don't know about. That might yeah, be I, actually in the in the, the bill from Casella. This is kind of blended in like in your phone bill, yeah. you a million dollars or something. Yep. So this answered, this was like a million dollar question for me that I had. And I had asked the select board previously. If we're paying Casella to haul our recycling in addition to our trash, where does it go? And is it the same as where Central Vermont Solid Waste Management goes? So if solid if central so Vermont Solid Waste Management has a bin at your transfer station and they pick it up, it goes to Casella's facility in Chittenden County. And so now I have an answer that either way, Casella is processing our recycling. That was a big question for me because I wondered whose rules do we need to play by for recycling? And I think this means they're the same, but I'm going to get that question answered when I talk to Casella to be sure. So that was a big question for me because their rules are presented a little bit differently on each of their websites, but I bet you essentially they're the same. They're just listing them differently. So these are all the board. Um, what is the role of the board member? I'm not gonna bog you down with this now, but if anyone wants to see this, I can email it to them. Um, here's all the board committees. You have to develop the budget. And this is what I want to share with you. And I, I could send this um, to Mariah so she could share it with you if you want to see it. But these are the benefits that Tumbridge gets for being a member. You don't need to go through it all now. But I, I think it would be a good idea to make sure Tumbridge is taking advantage of these. And I heard in one of the past select board meetings when Eliza was here that there was some money you were getting for Green Up Day, for example. Um, but there's lots of grant opportunities, programs for schools, all sorts of things that we should be getting for what we're paying. So we want to make sure Tumbridge is taking advantage of those things. Um, and some of these were mentioned up above already. And I did see um, Tumbridge has a solid waste, or, um, a hazardous waste collection day coming up in June. So we just need to make sure that gets advertised to residents. It's not on the calendar yet, but it's on Central Vermont's website. So it's on their website, but I don't know how they get that word out to Tunbridge. And is that a symptom of not having a rep or do they send that to the town clerk or the administrative assistant or the select board? So anyway, so that's all these bullets are what the town gets. Um, so it would be a good idea to have the select board aware of this and a representative kind of watching and making sure we're getting all of these things. Because you're basically paying Casella and Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District for services, right? So you right. want to make sure you're getting everything from both of them. I think that's it that I have from this document. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing that. But I wanted to um, let you know that I, the because I expressed interest, um, Lisa, their executive director, did reach out to me and ask if I could meet with her. 
And I kind of wondered, are they going to ask me any questions? Like, don't they want to know who I am and what I'm like? And if I would be decent on a board because, you know, people can be good or bad on boards, right? Um, so they haven't yet, but we're going to be meeting on Monday next week so I can ask more questions. So I wondered if you, the select board, had any questions that I can ask and report out at the next, after everything you just heard about. I have a long list of questions, um, but I don't know if you have any questions and I can be helpful in getting those answered. <clears throat> and I'm putting you on the spot so you could also email me between now and Monday. So I'm meeting with her Monday at 1.30 <laughs> over Zoom. So, so I mean, some day, some, some data, Kathy, would be interesting. Like I've always wondered how many Oh, say yeah. spoiled spoiled loads of, of recycling not not just from tunbridge but just district wide for central vermont it's you know it just seems between you know education or lack of education just from everything you've found out while digging into some of this about all the all the subtleties of recycling it seems to me like you know 50 percent of 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 those roll-offs would be, would be somehow tarnished, you know, it, it, how, how could they not with, with stuff in it that should not be in it? Yeah, it definitely sounded like it's less than 50%, but I think any amount means what we think we're recycling isn't getting recycled. They did have a really neat piece of data that I might've screenshotted, or I can ask them to send me the slide that showed year by year how much they get paid by the companies that take our recyclables to process into new products. And it was fascinating because the higher quality, the materials that Central Vermont sends to these companies, the more they get paid, which is what makes this all worth it so that they're going to be, they can pay their employees to do the zero sort and pay for that huge, enormous machine. Um, and so they had um, on this bar chart of how much they get paid year by year based on how high quality it is. And that means there's like no food debris or mold or waxy cardboard or those things, right? Um, like metallic wrapping paper that ruins the paper. It devalues it for recycling it for making new paper. Um, but on the bar chart, there was one that was negative. Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District actually had to pay to waste a whole load of recyclables. I can't remember what it was, if it was paper or cardboard because it was so low quality. So the high, it's in everyone's best interest to make sure those recyclables are high quality. So John, I'll try to see if there's any like data that I can get for that. I also was interested in, um, Mary Beth Lang asked me, you know, how, like how much gets recycled and is diverted from landfills and what products is it made into? Um, uh, there's very good news from Casella and Central Vermont Solid Waste Management. They do not ship our zero sort recycling to China. I don't know if you've seen the news headlines in the past several years on that. That goes into oceans and landfills and all sorts of other terrible things. Um, so we, it's all used domestically. And some of the companies are great, like Trex um, decking, that's making like all weather decking. Um, and so it, there's a lot of domestic uses that um, both Casella and Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District are committed to finding. Um, so the news on that was pretty good when, when people asked about that. Because um, I think some people are concerned about that. They read a, a scary headline, and that might be from an urban area on the East Coast or something that's doing that, shipping it to China, but not, not Vermont is not doing that. Um, okay, so my last thing for the select board, and this could be a to-do item, but I just want to plant the seed, um, is that I feel like there's a lot that we could do to kind of better inform the public. This is the town's transfer station page on the website. There's really nothing mentioned here about composting. And I have heard people say, what do we compost? What can't we compost? Right now it's against the law to throw food scraps away. And Tumbridge is supposed to be committed to making sure that doesn't happen. But how can you give people information so it's not here? Um, and then this list here is pretty outdated. 
There's no more numbers with plastics. Um, Central Vermont Solid Waste Management said like six years ago, they did away with recycling by number with plastics. Um, and there's nothing here on the rules. So for example, glass all colors, you can't send any Pyrex drinking glasses, sheet glass from like a car or a window in a home. So there's like so many things. And if you go to Central Vermont's website or Casella's, they have really cool infographics where this kind of glass, not that kind. And they're pictures with red X's through the ones you can't do and like a green thing for the ones you can. Um, foil, I said that before, you cannot recycle foil unless, oh, I brought show and tell, unless it's in a ball. Um, because everything going through that zero sort machine has to be two by two inches or bigger or two by two feet, uh, feet or smaller. Um, plastics, if you put black plastic in, things that are in microwavable meals or a lot of restaurants send um, takeout delis. Um, uh, if you get like a rotisserie chicken at a grocery store, it comes in a black plastic container. It says number something on it. So we throw it in our recycling bin. That is a major contaminant. Um, apparently the dye used in black plastic ruins the entire batch once it gets melted. They can't use it for anything. So Central Vermont does their best, you know, at the zero sort machine to get that out of there. But if we're sending them black plastic, it's could damage and contaminate something. So anyway, so my point of bringing this up is this list is a little outdated and I don't think it's thorough enough and I don't know. So my question to the select board, is there some way we could update this? And is there anyone at the transfer station there to answer questions when people have them or kind of guide that or make sure they're not doing those things? Um, I, <clears throat> I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure that somebody could update the, the list on the website. And as far as somebody at the transfer station, I guess Mike's the only one there and, and, and maybe we could educate him more. Yeah, Central Vermont has these great webinars and you can watch them later. So you could watch them at your own time on your own. Um, but even just some of the printables, they have you like you can get these laminated things that just really explain it. You hardly need to watch a webinar. The webinar might be what like inspires you and you hear lots of information and can ask questions, but the infographics really tell it all in a two minute look. Is there anything to do with like <laughs> poster size? materials that we could post at the transfer station along the fence or somewhere. Yeah. And I've been posting those on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so they have Casella is probably what I'd use. They have posters that look like this, and this may not be the right one for a, a municipal recycling. This might be like one for people who have bins, but we can find the right one. So, you know, they kind of tell you things. Um, so Casella has them and are you able to see me that I'm switching things? No, no. Um, they have them in different languages. They tell you what should go in trash. And then Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District, I don't think I necessarily have it open. They have posters too that you can get. Um, I didn't click and open it, but they have, they tell you like what goes in and what doesn't. This is more detailed. Um, but somewhere they have like posters you could have. Well, how about? Um, how about just like handouts that you could post on your fridge at home? That would be really handy. They also recommend like put this above your recycling bin. Like at our house, we have a cardboard box, like just put it on the wall above it. So like everyone in your house can kind of peek like, oh, no, no light bulbs, you know, no broken glass. Um, yeah. So it'd be as handy as anything right there. Just make have a bunch of those to hand out to people. Yeah. So I think there's easy thing, but like even on the town website, if someone were looking for information, if there could be like yeah. a clickable link that would go to one of those posters and people could download it or maybe just answer an immediate question. Right. So that was my last thing is maybe. You um, talk regard to Jeff about, you know, <clears throat> if you got him the information, he could put it on there somehow. Is Jeff who does the updates to the website? Yeah, yep. I can send you his email address, Kathy, if you want to okay. work directly with him. Um, or I don't mind if, you know, kind of being the liaison, but if you want to just email Jeff directly with all of this information, he could certainly put it on there for you. Okay, 
if you're okay with that, Mariah, yeah. I could, I could copy you. So you knew what I was saying okay. or doing. And so you're in the loop. Um, but maybe I can just suggest a few links. So instead of Tumbridge managing on their website, what's recyclable, what is it? It could be like, click on this poster or, you know, here's the A to Z guide for central Vermont solid waste management district that will answer all of your questions. I think that's a better idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, that is like, something I definitely um, would appreciate having a chance to do because I know people when they ask questions it's hard to point them to where to look to get those answers and some people don't go further than this page on the website um, but you're already making improvements with the online um, transfer station tickets so I know people were pretty excited about that last week yeah good um, I have one Happy. question for you oh go ahead John no go ahead Gary I just wondered if Kathy wanted to be a, a recycling czar or a recycling queen. Uh, I'll think. I'll think. I'll think on that, Gary. Okay. And I will. I will send you that in the chat. Definitely not a czar. Okay. It's not my style. Yeah, I, I'll need it for the minutes for next week. So if you decide <laughs> which one, okay, sure it'll probably be something like a little more dainty. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> less less controlling. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. Okay. Um. What was that, John? Uh, you know. The other mystery is is some of the con sort of conflicting advice you get, like you just pointed out broken glass is bad. And yet here we are putting all our glass into a, a compactor, which then smushes it. So it just seems like, wait a minute, we have to be breaking a lot of glass with our compactor. And yet they don't want that. So those are the kind of questions I'd love to ask. Yeah, I can ask that because um, in the webinar, nobody asked about that. They talked about how dangerous broken glass is in the zero sort facility. Like right. the employees are touching everything. So they talked a lot about injuries um, and there are all sorts of things that cause injuries. Like when people put textiles or different things that like get stuck in gears, um, plastic bags were a big one. Oh yeah. Like look at this plastic bags now are all starting to have numbers on them. And so people think, oh, look, it's a number, it's recyclable. And that's why they said, forget about the numbers. It's not about the numbers. So this is recyclable in plastic film recycling, which I've made a post on on the town Facebook page. But if this gets in the zero sort machine, what happens is, is they get stuck in gears and it like stops the conveyor belts and there, they showed a picture of what employees have to do to climb in and get it out. It's super dangerous. It seems to me there's got to be an engineer that can fix that. But anyway, so some of it's not just contamination and loss of value, but some of it is very dangerous and broken glass is one of them. They just can't have like you put a wine glass that's going to break. And then there will be broken glass where like a jar of pasta sauce, that glass is meant to be sturdier to bounce along the conveyor belt and they generally don't break. Um, and they have rounded edges. And so, yeah, John, I'll ask, like, what should you do with it then? But I think they're saying trash. How about dump princess? <laughs> oh, gosh, that, that sound, I, I have to say that sounds so Vermont. Um, doesn't Vermont have like a dairy princess and everything? They yeah. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. well, Can I ask? make a suggestion? <laughs> Who is that? Is that Todd? I think it's a little lower on the uh, royalty scale. Um, recycling regent. Ooh. A regent. Okay. And so while I've got the floor, um, a question that you may ask is, you know, Kathy, I'm, I'm very pleased that you're willing to follow up on this. And I do follow what happens a little bit with the solid waste management district. Um, is how many hours do they think, uh, I saw the number of meetings, 10, 10 out of 12 months, a, a monthly meeting, a lot of information. How much time does this take for each rep from each town? Sounds like it might take a lot of time and whether you have enough time for that. Um, as a uh, comparison, down here at the Royalton Bethel transfer station, the plastics, they don't, I guess they're not zero sort. Um, they only take one or two in their compactor and all the other ones are just supposed to go in the trash. So that yeah. definitely is anti-recycling, that that's method. Too that's too bad because Tumbridge takes yogurt cups, which a lot of those are like five or seven. Yeah, and, five or six, right. Yeah, and, then, and a long yeah. time ago, you couldn't do that in Tumbridge, but you can now. 
Yeah, and the other thing is just uh, you might on your own, if you have any time, do a little more research on Casella because they have they are a major player in the state. In fact, they are the player in the state. They don't always play by the rules. Um, there was a front page article in seven days about six months ago. I don't know if you can research that. It kind of gave a little bit more background. Was it yeah. about the dumping issue in Chittenden County? Well, yeah, I, and that was a big fine for that yep. solid waste. Yep. But it was exactly. more about, yeah, just I, it sounds like this could work really well. And it, it, then as far as Mike down at the transfer station, I mean, down at our dump, um, getting up to speed on all this. I think the public really needs to be informed. He can't be checking everybody's bag and what they're doing every time they come through. That's going to be very difficult, but good luck. Yeah. Okay. So I will have that meeting. Um, thanks, Todd. I wrote down some of those questions and John, I wrote down yours. Um, if you think of any others, email me before Monday afternoon and I'll ask away. And I can of course ask after that too. And then you know, if you want me to, I can come to, you know, have a report out at your next meeting, unless you know, it's just too much for you right now. Um, but just seeing what we can do, like Todd said, to really inform the public and the community. I have for a long time thought I was a fantastic recycler and I have learned in the last couple of months, I was doing a really lousy job. And so I'm kind of kicking myself that I hadn't done this sooner, but it turns out I was recycling in Tunbridge according to all the rules from six years ago. Like I thought I had it down and they did say six years ago, everything changed. And you know, the Tumbridge website is kind of like the six-year-old um, information with a couple of exceptions. So I think if we can get people up to speed, there might be well-meaning people out there in my boat, you know, that thought they were doing it right and, and weren't. So we can just help kind of elevate all that. Mariah, I like fairy godmother. That's so cute. Okay. So let me know if you have um, any other questions, just zap me a message and Mariah, I'll email Jeff about the website in the next couple of weeks. All right. Well, thank you, Kathy. Thank you very much for your enthusiasm. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Kathy. And, I, you know, I we've also been talking about just things like pricing at the dump and better signage and all that. So I think this all fits together. Yeah. And then hopefully by, you know, by the around town meeting and, and a few weeks after, well, our website will be clear and, <clears throat> and you know, with, with you and we'll, if you don't want to be the rep, you know, maybe it'll be the alternate rep and we can at town meeting um, get the word out too. see if anybody wants to be. Well, let me know. About, member. Let me know about that, because really, before I sign on, maybe we should make one call to the public just to see, because there, there's got to be someone here who just knows more about this than I do. Um, I don't know. There's so many talented people hiding in Tunbridge that sometimes you don't know. You see them at the post office or the library and you don't really know what they do. Um, so I hate the thought of taking this on without putting it out there to the community to see if anyone else would like to. Well, definitely bring it up at town meeting. And so. do you want me to like, try to like send you a little blurb or something? Like, how would you do it? You would just verbally say something. Blurt it out. Okay. Sure. Send right. us something. Kathy. I mean, I, yeah. I think you'd be great at it, but you know, if, if you want to wait and see if anybody else jumps on it, it's been a hard position to fill just for the reasons you. you yeah, you I was going to I was going to ask them on Monday if they have a list of historically in Tumbridge who did it, because maybe there's someone I can ask some questions about it. I'm sure it's changed. It's been 10 years since anyone's done it, but still just having an idea might be helpful. Yep. OK, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mariah, is Kathy Galuzzo next? She is, yes. All right. <laughs> Step up to the hey mic. All. Can you hear me? Can I hear you? Okay. Um, I'll be quick so you guys don't have to take long. Um, okay. the, the field dirt we were going to get, um, we found out is going to take um, a little longer to get. It's going to come until June. The price might change some, so I'll get back to you either the last meeting of this month or next month. I think it went from 3,100 to 3,500, um, but um, we need to find out more details because the, they just got really booked up and before we got back to them. Um, 
we're the sprinkler system and working with Luke and Maya, we're thinking we're not going to do a sprinkler system. They have a way that possibly we can store some water and get it over to the field to make it much more cost effective than doing a, a sprinkler system. Um, but there'll be more on that when we get as we get look at it and get closer to doing it. Um, I just mentioned the two new members, Luke Barnaby and Jeremiah Karen both um, came down Friday night and they are joined onto the rec committee with us. So we have Luke, Jeremiah, um, Seth, Matt, Andy, and me on the committee now. Um, and that'll also help with some of the confusion that went on with um, Matt Loftus, because we'll have more people. Luke is in town more often than we are. Andy's around. So hopefully it'll be easier to communicate and keep track of what's going on. Um, uh, we have some projects. We, we were down there Friday night, all of us, and we have some projects we're going to finish up. We want to finish painting the cook shack. I don't know if anybody's been by and saw that we moved the timber direct sign over to on the building um, and spiffed it up a little. There was a sign down there and the poles were falling down and cracking and the sign was going to tip over. So we, we saved the sign and moved it over and attached it to the cook shack so it looks nicer. Um, we did the green up day. We paired with Eliza for green up day. Um, so the first week that we did, we did it two Saturdays so that people that had tickets could still turn them in. Um, so the first week we turned in $764, I believe. And the next one a little over, we turned in over 200. So we did fairly well um, with that. We had it open for the little league was there and different people used it during the time. And some of the adult softball came down and bought some food. So, um, the pool is cleared and ready to put water in. We're working on that. Uh, Matt Loftus did a great job. Um, that's how we got ahead of ourselves on um, parking and the volleyball court. Matt was, Luza was talking to Matt about all the things we wanted to get done. Dogs barking, sorry. All the things we wanted to get done and Matt got them done, um, but a little more than what we thought. Um, uh, we want to talk about a website. Um, I talked to Jeff Hanson a little bit today. We're going to talk a little more about how we could possibly enhance mm -hmm. our page. The more we do down at the rec field, we've had a lot more requests for people wanting to use it, but we're never quite sure when Little League is there or what's going on. So we're trying to get a, a website where we can get a good calendar so people know. Um, we've had three or four people reserve it to, to use for birthday parties and to use for um, one person wants to do a family kickball thing so um but it'd be easier if we could have a web have it where people could go to the website and see the dates that it's available and also a couple people asked like wow we didn't even know this went on down here um how do we find out about it so if we had a good website we can say the activities that are going on down there so other people can take advantage of it that's the idea of all the activities we're trying to create and that that's what i have for now I don't have any money to request to spend. <laughs> oh, and we're going to join in on your July 4th. We're going to do the, um, we talked to the group and we're going to do cat pie bingo, ice cream. And I'm thinking probably no bounce house like we usually do just because of, I'm not sure where we'll be at that point in time, if we'll be able to have that. But questions for me. Yeah, <laughs> I just I just wondered what the estimate was on the parking lot and the volleyball courts. So the volleyball, I believe, is going to be under our five hundred dollar limit. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, Matt volunteered some of his time. I haven't got an invoice for the parking lot. We didn't know we were getting a parking lot when we started this. It, it wasn't we didn't get an estimate on it because we didn't imagine it to be what it is. I think he did an absolutely wonderful job, but Matt and Matt did not communicate. So um, as soon as I get that invoice, I'll be back on to get it approved. Kind of a little ask backwards on this one, I know. Yeah. Well, just let us know. So, right. I mean, it's it's all stuff I think the select board would, would have approved, but the sooner sooner we know about it, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, and we would have gone through a more process and let you know it was going to be more extensive than we thought if 
Matt was just going to put some dirt over there and, and fill in the, the, the mess. Like when the guys go over there, there's poison ivy and stuff all over. So every time we work on the pool, somebody ends up with poison ivy. So we did want to try to clean that up some and put um, a, some dirt over there. to cut. But then m the way Matt described it, Matt Loftus thought it was like a done deal. Go ahead and do it. And he did a really good job and put some parking in. So now we are where we are but we are gonna make sure communication is better. Hence, more people on the committee, it's less people, more people trying is easier because there's more people that can be around. Like we didn't know it was done because we don't go down every day always. So we got a couple messages. I'm like, Matt, what are you? What happened? And we found out we had parking. Anything else for me guys? No, I guess not. Any, any other projects All right. then? Uh, right now, the, on, the only other thing that we're, we're going to start working on the banners more, which that's that's an ongoing project. Um, we're going to update those. We have a we think we have a new, better way to hang them up. Part of the website was we were thinking if people pay for their banner, we could put their logo on, on our website as well as hang the banner up at the field. So that gives them a little bit more advertising um, for, spo for sponsoring the recreation department. I mean, that's with what we have for banners right now, that's six that's a six thousand dollar a year fundraiser for us. And I'm sure we could get a lot more if now that we have more people. It was just hard to get the time to get it done with a small group. Um, Kevin would work on it during the winter when he was alive because he had more free time then. So um, but now we have more and Maya and Luke have agreed to help with that. That's the other thing. Luke is gonna be the member on the um, the trails committee. Yeah. He, he said he'd yeah. take that on. Seth, I think, talked to them and found out he thought it was just too much of a time commitment. He couldn't work it in. So Luke said he would do it. Good. Um, but I don't, I don't think of any other big projects other than little things here and there that we um, need to finish up, you know, painting some buildings, getting the pool filled, um, nothing over the $500 mark. And getting water to the cook shack or hydrants, you know, drinking fountains near the field, would that be? Yeah, I don't know if we can do that. I haven't found that out, but I know um, we're gonna at least get water to the field to keep it dry and water to, to help us when we're trying to clean up in the cook shack and stuff. I don't know about drinking water. Right. But hopefully with more minds on our committee, we can figure out more things. But I do know that the, the field is getting a, a lot more use. We have four teams that are gonna use it as their home field this year. So that's um, $150 we get from each team per season. Um, we have three tournaments that we're planning on having further in the summer. One's the second or third weekend in July. And then we have one in August and one in September. And we may do one in October because the person that typically used it for October is not going to do it this year. So those are those are good fundraisers for us when we have enough people to manage and do them. Kathy, was the the feeling about the horseshoe pits? I don't know how many how many pipes you have, but it was it more to you know make it into something that leagues could come and play there, or was it more just let's let's have a couple up, you know, and have it be more family and recreational? I think we're thinking family and recreational. I don't know if the location where it is, if it could be leagues, um, but there's there's already horseshoe pits down there. Right. Um, there's, if you down by across from Sunny's, um, there's horseshoe pits there that the concrete, they're all concrete cemented in like boxes and people, somebody just took the, the poles out at some point, the stakes, whatever you call them took them out at some time. So we did need to get sand and new stakes in there. Um, and then I guess to see how, how it goes and the interest in it. And we're gonna put cones over them so nobody drives on them. So when they're not in use, we decided we'd have like those orange cones so people don't drive over the stake because people won't use, be used to horseshoe pits being there. Um, the volleyball court, we need to get a net for it now and um, some type of border to keep the sand in. but. Um, those shouldn't be very expensive things. Good. We're trying. 
yeah. sometimes getting a little ahead of ourselves but Ryan. <laughs> <clears throat> all right all right anything else for me that's not, it. I, think, I think Kathy just let all the new members know just to, you know that that you're all you're all up to speed on you know if they're going to be future expenses that that somebody you or, or Luke or somebody just gets in touch with us as soon as possible yes I agree that'd be great We've been thank trying hard. We have a pretty good. We have a pretty good system. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Thank you. All right. Looks like Mariah Lawrence is next. There she is. Hi. Yes. Um, I have to say, Kathy, both Kathy's, first of all, Kathy Galuza, that I didn't know that's what was happening, and that is going to be awesome down there. It sounds so cool. I was trying to figure out if that was going to be volleyball or what. That that looks so fun we spend too much time down there so um and Kathy Terry, I mean, that just sounds like a library program like we need to do a recycling program at the library maybe I have an obsession with creating library programs but <laughs> um so I I'm here just to talk about the fence originally it was just a fence and like I imagined a sandbox or something in out back something simple um but Aaron Barnaby had asked if we had any creative ideas in lieu of flowers for Sue. And, um, you know, <laughs> enhancing the outdoor space felt really appropriate. And um, Aaron loved that idea. And we thought about putting the story walk that's at the fairgrounds, having a permanent installation around the library. Uh, we've had a lot of ideas, but none of them nothing is solid, nothing is solidified at all. And we don't want to um, make it that way until we form a committee. We'd like to have maybe a community, you know, input session so that people can give their ideas or say whether or not they want to be on the committee and um, kind of put things together in that way, because it's, it could be really wonderful, especially if everybody participates. I've, I, everybody I talked to has a different idea. So um, basically at this point, it's the um, Gordy came by and we talked about the fence a couple of days ago and I showed him that it would go around the front of the library and all the way back behind where Jean um, used to park. And we thought about how you, you might have to plow for the doors back there, but then the more we thought about it and we thought, no, you wouldn't necessarily have to plow it it could just be like a shoveled walkway so that opens up the idea of what the fence on the fairgrounds road side could be um out back the ideas have been picnic tables and awning uh like a story hour space wendy thought of a fire pit i love that idea <laughs> um there's been yeah talk about um oh brenda wanted to mention um i believe that the community board could perhaps be on the library side. I don't know if, you know, that's just an idea that she'd had. I, I thought that was worth bringing up as well. Um, Aaron Barnaby wants to be on the committee. Elaine Howe wants to be on the committee and I'll, I'll definitely be on it and we'll open it up to, to be as many people as, um, you know, are interested. The trustees last night approved that it could be formed. And, you know, I would like to ask that you guys approve that it could be formed perhaps, so. And of course, any questions? <laughs> I think it'd be great if you had a committee. So I would, I don't know if we have to make a motion or not, but if, if so, we need a, someone to move that. I make a motion that the library set up a committee, fence, fence committee or? Outdoor space. Outdoor space. A task committee. force. I, we always talk about task force at the Vermont Fair. I like it. A fence <laughs> task force. <laughs> We're gonna how need much, a, how much room that. is back there? <sighs> um, there's not a ton of room, but I think with um, a good imagination, there's enough room. Definitely. Like, um, I don't know. You should go back there and check it out because it. I don't know. I like to imagine the potential back there. It's not a huge space, but we're not a huge town. We don't need a huge space. <laughs> 
All right, John, you want to second Mike's motion? I will second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. All right. Aye. Form a task force. <laughs> aye. And, and Mariah, you know, uh, thinking about Sue and, and memorial donations, was that a space that would be used or would it be potentially another? I was thinking almost like your grant for the school um, space. Yeah you know, that amphitheater. So would, the, would, the, would that task force also look into that potentially too? Yeah, that was actually, um, so in order to commemorate both um, people, I've kind of been imagining like the different spaces. And one is I thought the fence, I don't know how much a fence costs. So I'm waiting for Gordy to get back to me. I like have absolutely no idea. So I'm imagining that the fence portion could be for the original 1800 and then if we made like a mini amphitheater out back and had like a story hour chair that that would be a really special spot for um a plaque for sue you know and have the two spaces both beautiful and honoring the people who passed so um yeah that but you know I didn't, we didn't get you do you know i should have told you that we didn't get that grant at the school I, I heard from Emily, yeah. Okay, okay. But 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 that um, doesn't take it away from that we would love a spot like that too. Yeah, the idea lives on for sure. <laughs> right, yeah. All right, you, you also mentioned the community bulletin board. Is that the one that's leaning up next to the post office? Yeah, yeah, I missed that. Um, that's too bad it fell over. Didn't you build that? Michael Saka told me you two yeah. built that. We did. Uh, and Michael and I have plans to, to reconstitute it uh, at some point. Um, so do we need permission? It, I, I guess my, my question is, do you, does the library people want it on the library side versus where it was? And, and if so, we could plant it over there. Well, um, I think it could be really nice to have it at the library side. Um, we'd maybe draw more people up the walkway. You know, I, I like that. But um, if well, it was you know, if it's more convenient on the other side, it doesn't, that's not too important, but it could be really nice to have right out front there for sure. Okay, let's talk more about that. Okay. All right, is that all you needed, Mariah? Mm hmm All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> What's next, the other Mariah, is it just warrants? Uh, let me double check. Yes, warrants. And then I know that Rudy wants to talk um, during after you approve the warrants. Mike, have you seen the warrants? I have not seen the warrants. I have not either. I just got them this afternoon, apparently. What about John? Have you seen the warrants? No, I saw they just came through, so I hadn't had a chance to look. But I suppose or I could screen share them or we could make a motion for you to sign off on them. I guess we better make a motion to let Gary sign off on them if he likes them. Okay, well, I can go stop tomorrow or the next day and um, take a look at them. And if anything big jumps up, I'll let you know. Otherwise, if it's normal stuff, I'll sign off. You want to second that motion, John? I second that. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right, so I'll, I'll put that on my to-do list. All right, so Rudy, I guess you're up. I just wanted to bring up that there is a uh, bird walk scheduled for this Saturday on the town forest that the Conservation Commission has slated from 7.30 to 9.30. And that will be on the town garage lot forest. And uh, Michael Saka and Neil Fitzgerald are each planning on bringing somewhere between 12 and 15 people each, um, probably plus a few other people. They were hoping some people would join from the town forest committee so in this time of COVID uh, and people traveling often singly or 
in very small groups that could end add up to a lot of cars. And so we were wondering about uh, the possibility of, of parking in that flat area by the town garage. Um, because I don't believe, as far as I know, nobody has talked to, to Brent about it. Um, and it being a Saturday morning, I, I have some concerns about uh, a lot of cars lining the sides of the roadway through there. So that um, was the primary issue. Mike, you're going to call Rodney in the morning and to talk to him about pickets anyway? Yep. Could you yep. speak to Rodney and just tell him that they're going to park up there? I, I don't see any reason why he couldn't. Do birds get up by 7.30 in the morning? Oh, God. <laughs> They've gone to, taken a siesta by that time. Exactly. <laughs> more and more so these days. Right. Maybe in West Humbers they sleep in. Who knows? <laughs> they do sleep in. So it's it's going to be Saturday, Rudy? Yes. Is this coming Saturday from 7.30 to 9.30 is what the walk is scheduled for. So Michael yep. thought people would probably clear out by 9.45. Yep. I'll ask Rodney. Rudy, how will you get word out to the bird watchers where to park? Uh, I think we'll probably have to direct the traffic as, as they come in. We'll need to get down there early and tell people that they need to park up in that corner. I have okay. already had some exchanges with Michael uh, Saka, you know, expressing my concerns about uh, the boundary with Brent's and it being a Saturday and not having a lot of cars lying in the road. You could get Brenda's sign and have a picture of a penguin on it, pointing where to park. <laughs> Good idea. All right, that was what I had. All right, well, good luck on that. I'm sorry I can't make it, but I'll be busy. Um, thank you, Rudy. Thank you, Rudy. Thanks, Rudy. Are you going on this walk? I'm hoping to, yeah. Uh, um... All right, any other business? Oh, hold it. Mariah has her hand up. Yes, I forgot to say two things just to announce them. Um, Kathy asked me, first of all, we you should all know if you don't already know that it is going to be a bring your own lunch for town meeting, but selling whole pies. Ooh. So that's important. And then the other thing is the library is now open without appointment. I haven't started advertising, but there's a limit on people um, that can be in there and obviously precautions, but you can come in anytime you want without an appointment. Nice. Okay. All right. Have you got a joke before you leave? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that you would ask. So I, I, I was prepared. Um, so you might already know this one. Um, <laughs> what did, um, hold on. I don't want to mess it up. What did the Zen Buddhist ask the hot dog vendor mm, don't know already funny <laughs> <laughs> um may, may i have one with everything i think that's how it goes <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have messed it up i might have messed that uh -huh. up it's something about like, one with everything <laughs> so funny though Okay. <laughs> you needed to put, a, you needed to put a, a priest and a rabbi in there too, or something. It would have been they kosher. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your effort. Nope. <laughs> hey, hey guys, I forgot to tell you um, one more thing, and you probably already know, but the school board is going to do a informational meeting on the fairgrounds right after the right after the town meeting, and that's just the informational meeting. And then on Monday we'll have another informational meeting and then Tuesday we're voting by Australian ballot okay but just to give you guys so but Monday the board the board will be there not Monday Saturday the board will be there after your meeting gotcha. um, okay just wanted to it's there'll be more info out on it but we'll be there that day okay
All right. Yeah, Kathy, well, I, I noticed the sandwich board in Chelsea that said F Bud vote May 25th. Yep. It's I Tuesday have... night, by option. Yeah, I have the, um, our okay. electronic board says that our, our budget vote is um, May 25th as well. So that's up on our board as you leave town. Okay, so they're budget votes. I wasn't sure if it was something else. Nope, it's budget on, uh, but it's Australian ballot in each town. Are you gonna have yeah. a board meeting as well, Kathy? Yeah, that's well, it's going to be our informational meeting. Oh, okay. It's going to be one of the same. Gotcha. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully this passes because it's going to be we're doing this in person if it doesn't. <laughs> I was for in person. I was not in the majority. <laughs> Kathy Terramy, what do you have? Kathy Galuzzo, is there a set start time for that meeting? You just or, or is it immediately following the town meeting and select it says board? 2 p.m. on the morning. Okay, so it, it does the select board have an end time for town meeting? There could be a gap between them, or is there a chance town, town meeting could go after 2 p.m.? There's a chance, but it probably won't. Okay. Right. There, there'll probably be a gap, and it and if it's not, we'll, the, the, we'll, we'll just wait until everybody, until you guys get done before we start. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else from anyone? <clears throat> no, but Kathy, was there a, some sort of school report in our town report this year? No, we did our own. There's our own report is going out. There's a school FBUD report. You'll get a book from FBUD also. Okay, so, so that's- there will that... be the town report. Yeah, there'll be the town report plus FBUD did an annual report um and i think okay. it went in the mail i think it, ours went in the mail today great so i'm sure people are looking for that too yeah so that way they'll have they should have both they'll have both by the time you have your meeting so that um both things will be there to look at great right, thank you um i see brenda field has joined us would you like to speak brenda under other business bizarre bizarre Bazaar. Stop that. No, I don't have much to offer. I've been still looking into how the state wants to suggest we set up our town meeting. You know, one of them said that a couple of towns that have been holding it and, you know, it's further back when they're being <laughs> cautious. And I don't know if it's inflammatory or not, but a suggestion of unvaccinated on one side where they have a 10 foot, supposed to be a 10 by 10. 100 square foot, if they're unvaccinated and the other side of vaccinated, the chairs are a bit closer, but that kind of, I don't know if that's offensive. I've got both back from the townspeople. <laughs> you guys might have something to say about that. Just a suggestion, because I'm not a czar. <laughs> when we were going to, Jamie checked into it from, uh, from his contacts, Jamie, the superintendent, and when we were going to do it outside, to make sure that we would be approved, we needed to be able to um, keep the six foot social distancing and, and wear masks. Those were our two requirements to do it outside. Sounds good to that, me. That, that was, I don't, I don't know. I know the, the masks are becoming more optional and whatnot, but, but it was, they told Jamie six feet apart and wear a mask. But then I know that changed to three feet apart after that, so. I don't know. And they still and they still have unvaccinated a little bit larger distance, but they're that part they're not really saying much to me about. Let's just keep playing on by ear. We get closer, we'll surprise all of you. Yeah, I think we'll have to. We'll be we'll keep we're actually gonna jerk your chair out from underneath you and accuse you of being too close. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a just don't care section where you can sit as close as you want. <laughs> that'll be a, that'll be the dunk box the, the, the dunk thing. i like that okay that's it for me all right thank you brenda thank you brenda. thank you brenda 
Any Those other spoken. <laughs> Nothing from anyone, huh? Okay. Oh, do we know when do we know when town reports will show up in in our mailboxes? They were just, they were just mailed out today. Uh, they should be any okay. like maybe the Tumbridge residents will be getting them tomorrow or the next day. Takes a couple of weeks to get them over here to West Tumbridge. Yeah. <laughs> Send one by Pony Express, you'll get it quicker. Okay. And so, Mariah, you're all set because now there's another election you've got to do. I know. Yeah, I'll, I'm like a professional now. I've what is this? My fifth one. I think I've got it down. No, I'm all set. Um, Gary and I did okay. talk that you guys have a select board meeting that night, so probably the three of you won't be down to count. But I will get some other BCA members. It should just be pretty quick vote count, little tally. Okay, I guess if there's nothing Sounds else, good. I entertain a motion. I make, I make a motion. We adjourn. Second, I second that. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Look at that. I lasted aye. the whole meeting. We've already got our joke in. <laughs> We've already had our joke. Why don't you get another one? <coughs> I guess they're leaving by the droves. <laughs> 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 See you later. Bye, guys. Thank, you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Mariah. Yeah, you're Good welcome. Time. Good job. Thanks. Hopefully, I can figure out how to send this recording. Don't say good job yet because, you know, send it up to the cloud. Know. I take the praise make, back. Make Mike's motions. Make Mike's motions really articulate. I will. <laughs> make him sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Bye. See ya. My second. My seconds always sound good. <laughs> <laughs>